Welcome to Overwatch. In this episode of Easy to Learn, we'll be discussing Zarya, the fierce Russian bear of Overwatch. We'll go over her abilities and how they should shape your play in order to get the most quickly out of her unique kit, as well as important considerations such as when to pick Zarya, what maps and areas she shines in, and the moment to moment mindset you should be striving to maximize her power. Zarya is a unique heroine in that she has a very clear power curve thanks to her charge mechanic. Her primary weapon, the Mighty Particle Cannon, starts out as a little more than a flashlight. This versatile piece of kit either shoots a direct beam of damage or fires an arcing projectile that explodes on impact, giving her powerful zone denial. Due to this, Zarya is strong at close and medium range. Over long distances, she simply can't reach enemies and can only hope for a lucky shot to land with her explosive charges. When learning Zarya, one key thing is to understand the range of the particle cannon's primary fire. It isn't very long and does require a little precision to use correctly. The ability to hold your cursor smoothly on the target is vital for handling your more nimble opponents, as is the ability to predict where to land that devastating explosive shot to finish them off. The real trick to Zarya is understanding her charge mechanic. I'll take a moment to say now that when referring to charge on Zarya, do not confuse it with her ultimate's charge. When in doubt, if we're talking about Zarya and charge, we're talking about her damage potential. Otherwise, we'd say ultimate or ultimate charge. Charge builds when Zarya's barriers take damage. She has two of these, one personal shield that can take a few hits, and the other projected barrier that can shield one other person. The ability to use these effectively is what separates a good Zarya from a great one. Effective Zarya play is utterly dependent on her ability to assess the battle and time barriers correctly. While they have a relatively short cooldown, bad timing will oftentimes result in either a dead ally or a dead Zarya. Let's focus on you first. When leaving the spawn, your first priority must be to build up charge as quickly as possible. Due to this mechanic, Azaria at zero charge is a basically weaker combat unit than most other heroes of the game. But, Azaria at 100 charge is an unstoppable monster due to the way that she snowballs. Look for a choke point on firefights, throw yourself in front of rockets and get that charge built up as soon as possible. You're ineffective in combat at zero and I'd argue you remain somewhat ineffective until about 70 charge where you start tearing people apart. Using the shield needs some care, it has a tiny duration. I recommend getting into the mindset of thinking of it as an active block rather than a deployed shield. You aren't setting up some tough bulwark like Reinhardt or Winston. You're reacting to a visible threat and soaking their initial hits before killing them. This is Zarya's key strength. She will very rarely take core damage due to her hit point pool of 200 health and 200 shields, so if they do get through your barrier, they still need to get past your shield for lasting damage. Once you're at high charge, you will melt them before they can do that. This is only half the story, of course. Zarya can only reach 50% charge with her personal barrier, the other 50% coming from the projected barrier. This is a far more fiddly thing to use and does make you slightly reliant on your teammates knowing what to do when shielded. First, let's state the obvious. If someone is taking damage and they don't have a Reinhardt or a Winston shielding them, giving them a barrier is probably worthwhile. I'll also take this moment to say that barriering a Reinhardt with his barrier up gives you nothing. Roadhog is especially vulnerable as a big target, and Zarya shores up his weaknesses of being a huge sponge that people can pound on easily for ultimates. Diva is similar. Her ability to charge in and huge size means she benefits massively from the shield. But just shielding tanks is a huge waste. First, be aware of obvious threats and understand that overkill does not penetrate a barrier. If a barrier is on one hit point and Widowmaker shoots it for maximum damage, she'll only deal that single hit point of damage. This means things like Tracer's Bomb, Junkrat's Ultimate, or any source of high, single target damage can be eaten by the barrier. Diva's Self-Destruct, for example, is a fantastic way to generate free charge. Just make sure to time it right. The final consideration is if people have their ultimates ready. Keep your eye on Farah, Soldier 76, Reaper and Genji especially. The barrier means it's far more likely for them to get their full ultimate off and deal massive damage. You'll also probably make a new friend as they scoop up the kills. In short, your considerations for barrying other people are... Are they taking damage? How much? Can they survive it? How badly do you need charge yourself? And can they escape? 
If Roadhog is taking a pounding up front but can sidestep back, but Trace is frantically fighting in the back lines and dodging rocket fire, you might pick Roadhog if you need guaranteed charge, or you might pick Tracer if she can safely grab a kill before retreating. Are they in immediate danger? An obvious common example is a Tracer or Diva Bomb. Free charge for you, negated ultimate for them. And what can they do with the barrier? Soldier 76 and Reaper can tear people apart if their ultimates are up, but an alternative is someone like Mei who can stall and stall and stall with a Zarya barrier keeping her propped up. This combination is great for last minute holds. So we know a little about the considerations when burying, let's talk weapon. You've got a high charge, so when should you beam and when should you explosive? The short answer is it's complicated. The long answer is it's really, really complicated. Practice will help immensely in making the primary fire strong. The ability to track nimble targets like Tracer and Genji means you tear them apart with brutal speed. If you can draw them into tight environments, you can nullify their dodging with explosive shots, but in more open spaces, try to deal damage with the beam and wear them down. But to land a finishing blow, try and go with the explosive. This can catch them off guard and is an efficient use of your ammo. Once under 25 energy in your gun, the explosive shot effectively becomes cheaper. Trying to beam them to death sometimes leads them to just realize they're getting low on health and run. That said, Zarya's beam cuts right through Genji's Reflect and D.Va's Defense Matrix. There's nothing more satisfying than cutting D.Va out of her protective machine. Against larger targets like tanks, I recommend using the beam almost exclusively. The damage output is far higher for your ammo and their size means you won't struggle in targeting them. The beam does a shocking amount of damage at high charge if you keep it steady. I cannot emphasize this fact enough. While spamming with the explosive shots is safer, you'll really want to master the beam. Final thing before we move on to meta considerations is Graviton Surge, Zarya's ultimate. The ability that ties with her projected barrier to make her the queen of big plays. The Graviton Surge has a disgusting synergy with your kit and lets you wipe the entire enemy team off the map if used correctly. With a broad radius, it'll consume any hero without an escape ability. Tracer's Blink, Winston's Leap, Widowmaker's Grapple, Reaper's Wraithform, Genji's Dash, there, there's certainly options to get away. Those left in its grip, however, are totally vulnerable, hovering in place just above the event horizon. They'll take minor damage from the Rift, but their inability to move means you can cannon them to death with ease and your team can land easy shots in support. Three or four explosive shots at maximum charge is enough to kill a pack of 200 hit point heroes and you can easily drill through them with a beam. What's also nice is they'll tend to feed you charge. Running at the vortex with your barrier up, they'll usually try and shoot you down before you kill them, which is the easiest way to die to a Zarya. The exception, of course, is if Winston or Reinhardt gets their barrier up in the field. But even against a Reinhardt, you can try circling around to force him to deal with threats from multiple angles. Aside from the obvious, grabbing up the enemy team for your own AoE alts, incidentally, if there's no defense in Matrix or Reinhardt barrier, Farah's barrage on its own can kill an entire team, the Graviton Surge can also cancel the momentum of enemy assaults. If they're charging for a control point, stopping them up can spread some confusion and buy defenses time to deal with the push. Think of it like being a big pink-haired bully, grabbing up the enemy nerds so your friends can punch them before they start getting too scrappy. I round this section off by saying that announcing your ultimate is ready is important as Zarya. It also gets other people doing it to help you coordinate. This lets you play properly and hail to the queen of big plays. Also, I mentioned earlier that she snowballs, and she really does. Once at maximum charge, she kills faster. This means people can't deal lasting damage to her, which means she keeps getting high charge and killing quickly. Try to keep that momentum. At maximum charge, you're the baddest bitch on the battlefield. Act like it. Let's get into meta considerations now. When and where to pick Zarya, who she partners well with, that kind of thing. In most pub games, I generally see a 2 3 1 split of tanks, damage dealers, and support. Zarya can skew this balance. She's a hybrid damage dealer and a tank. She can't protect an entire team effectively, but her killing power is incredibly high and she has huge amounts of momentum. I recommend partnering up with a main tank like Reinhardt or Winston. They can focus on the front line and you can look for big plays. But for a more aggressive team, Zarya and Roadhog shore up each other's weaknesses incredibly well. Roadhog pulling enemies in close and you giving him extra safety. When considering whether or not you want to pick Zarya, have a look at your team. If you've got a team that wants to spread out, Tracer, Farah, Mercy, Reaper and the like, Zarya is an excellent pick. 
Think of a battle with lots of flanking heroes as many little flashpoints of high damage. By placing shields smoothly as those flashpoints arise, you can tip the balance for your team. You can also hold your own, somewhat unlike a Reinhardt and Winston perhaps, blocking a choke and protecting a point, making you effective enough at stalling that your spread out team can group up if the point is being contested or similar. Avoid Zarya if the enemy team has a really bomb Mercy Fire combo, as she struggles to deal reliable damage on those targets. Otherwise, the only major counter other than just good play is Zenyatta. Zenyatta is your arch nemesis. You're reliant on outpacing and outdamaging your opponent. Zenyatta destroys your ability to do that with a single orb of discord. When you have it on you, retreat and play heavily defensively. Trying to fight with a debuff on you is just asking to get annihilated. In terms of map, Zarya works well in tight spaces. She'll struggle in open areas like the final point on Numbani, but she has a massive perk over Reinhardt in that she can defend all sides. I actually really like Zarya on Hanamura, for example. Even though the second point is huge and open, she can remove reactively to cover which choke point needs her most in a way that Reinhardt could only dream of. She makes an excellent payload pusher as well, where you can focus on dispensing barriers and making sure the cart keeps moving. In short, pick Zarya when you need something flexible and mobile to shore up weak spots as they arise. If you're defending a more focused show point, perhaps Reinhardt could work better, for example. I'll finish up by touching on her keywords. I label Zarya as a commander, a term which only applies to one other hero, Zenyatta. To get the most out of Zarya, you need a really good idea of the battle as a whole, as it ebbs and flows, where the pressure points are, and reacting quickly to send a barrier to whomever needs it. Zarya's commander status is a mentality. The other five players are your soldiers, your comrades. It's up to you to protect them by fighting with them when they need it. Unlike Reinhardt, the stalwart bulwark at the front, Zarya needs to remain flexible. And that is where a great Zarya is born. Thanks for watching to the end. I've been Josh as one amongst many, and I hope you learned a little something about Zarya. If you've got any comments or criticism, let me know in the comments. More detailed analysis of Zarya looking at specific cases will come in the future with a hard to master episode, but this should be enough to set you on the right path of mastering Russia's greatest hugs machine. I want to hug you like big fuzzy Siberian bear. Toodles.